Okay, welcome back. I know it's uh, been a while since I've made a bunch of games in succession, but I've already made this game before, but I just wanted to have another go at it because, if I'm honest with you, it was really annoying me that the way I did my previous um, tower defense game was basically if your sprite was touching something, it then switched direction and then you sort of had... If you've ever played um, Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, there's like a, a mission on there, like the Team Rocket base, where you get like spun in certain directions and things it was sort of like that and it was just i don't think it was particularly good um so i've had another go now if you've done the car game tutorial you'll have 100 percent seen or probably guessed how i'm going to do this but we're going to use the uh pathfinding um uh what was it called pathfinding library so i've got pathfinding browser and browser.min what we're going to use um and P5 Play, so I'm just going to copy these in because I've already got it all nice and ready. So I can just copy from P5 Play all the way up to here. So I've got P5 Play in there and I've got this pathfinding browser.min. So that's most of my uh, libraries all loaded in there. And yeah, let's just get straight to it. So um, yeah, so we've got a lot of things to make first, we've got a lot of variables. Um, now, I'm gonna sort of, again. I've I've not really I don't really plan my videos. I just I just sort of make them and see what happens. So um, first things first, I want a group for my towers. So I'm gonna to say tower equals a new group like that. I'm just gonna to say tower dot collider equals static for now. As I say, I'm not gonna make a full full game, but I am gonna make it. Um, Sort of playable, but then obviously you have your own different tower types and things like that as well. I might extend it further if I want to. Depends how I feel. So now I'm going to have another group called a placeable. Now it's going to be um, an area where I'm allowed to place a tower. Um, so a placeable equals new group like that. And then I'm going to give that a tile. So I'm going to say placeable dot tile equals of one. Now. I'll explain why I'm not using like I usually use like letters, um, and that's for a reason because if you've done the the racing game video, you'll notice we use that matrix where a one is not walkable and a zero is walkable. So just to make life easier, I'm just going to make that tile like where you can't walk a one, but obviously it doesn't have to be. Um, just makes it easier when you're converting things across. Um, so then I've got. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the width and height is going to be one, so placeable dot width equals one, and placeable dot height equals one. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually add in some weird bits. So I'm going to say all sprites dot tile size equals. And I'm going to make a, a variable called tile size. I'm just going to say let tile size equals. I'm just going to go 32, just like 32 by 32 grid. <laughs> what that means is that. Every time I draw something, I can just say, like, if I want to make something twice as big, instead of writing 64, I can just write 2. And it also means the X and Y positions, instead of saying, um, let's say, 32, 32, 64, I can just say it's at position 2, 2, if it's down here or something. So it makes drawing things a little bit easier. And I'm just going to say placeable.color equals green, and make that a string. And then um, the collider, so placeable dot collider equals no. So that's going to be where we're going to place our our bits in. Then we're going to make a start group, which is going to be where the the enemy spawn from. So we're going to say start equals new group, and I'm going to give that s as a tile. And then I don't want to be able to see that, so start dot visible equals false. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to say end equals a new group. Um, end dot tile equals f for finish. Um, and end dot visible equals false. And then just like before, I'm going to have a node group. So obviously, it's the first time you're doing it. Um, we're going to make a bunch of sprites. We're going to call them node. And what it's going to do is that's going to act as our places to go. So it's going to be a bunch of nodes to follow um, for our pathfinding algorithm. And again, we don't want a collider for that. 
then we definitely want our enemies. So we're going to have enemies equals a new group. So it's going to be our, our dudes we attack. So again, enemies.width equals 1. Enemies.height equals 1. Enemies.counter equals 0. Um, enemies.collider equals K because I don't want to be able to go through walls. And then enemies.health. I'm just going to say one for now. What we might do is you can change that later on. Um, and this counter is going to be them counting through those nodes to make sure it's got through the full path. And then I want projectile equals a new group. That's going to be our bullets that we're going to fire. I um, don't want to keep writing projectile though, so I'm going to be cheating and copy that. Uh, so projectile, and that's going to be dot radius equals 0 0.3. I want it nice and small for a bullet. Collider equals none, and then we're gonna give them a life. So what that means is they'll last for 100 frames before disappearing. You can obviously change that, um, and that's pretty much it for the um, setting up of our groups and things. Now, again, I will post this as a comment, like I said in the last video, for my tile map. I've already drawn it out, so that's gonna be my start. That's gonna be my finish. I'm starting at a 1 1, and each tile is going to be 1 1 because it's just it translates to 32 32. And that's going to be my path really clear. And just like before, we're going to add in my matrix, which is going to be exactly the same. You see, you can sort of see the path there. Obviously, it looks a bit dodgier because it looks a bit wider just because of the commas and things, but it is the same path, I promise. And then what we can do is do exactly as we did in the uh, racing game is we can do um, let grid equals new pathfinding dot grid and then um, pass in that matrix uh, let the finder equals a new pathfinding dot a star finder and then what I've got now is I'm going to set the path but instead of in the previous in the the racing video I said oh, 32 32 and 32 by 5 I think it was to get it working what I've actually done this time is I've actually figured out um, a better way of doing that so what we can do is for the start position I'm just gonna make uh, four variables I'm gonna call them a b c and d so probably bad names but I'm gonna say it's gonna be so the start zero it just means it's gonna be the only but it's the first but it's the only um only very early sprite in the uh, start group. So I'm going to do dot x take away one. This is going to be start position. B equals exactly the same thing. But that's going to be the A and the B. So it's going to be the X and the Y. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for C and D. So C equals D equals. And it's going to be exactly the same. But that's going to be for end. And that's going to be the Y. And that's going to be the end as well. And I'm going to spell end right there. So that's going to be our start positions. Now, because I've changed the tile size of the whole like draw function, everything like that, everything's going to be drawn at 1, 1, 1, 2 and things. It converts directly to this pathfinding algorithm. So then when I set my path, I can literally just pass in all four of those variables. So A, B, C, D. And that's going to find my path for me. Um, and then just like before, I'm just going to say 4p of path, and I'm going to say uh, let n equals a new node dot sprite, and then I'm just going to draw that in the various positions. So I'm going to say um, p0 plus 1 and p1 plus 1. I was just going to draw them um, just one tile ahead, just so it draws it all nicely. So it should, if I run that now, fingers crossed nothing breaks, of course something did. Did this problem before where we had this whole PF not defined? Um, couldn't actually tell you what the problem was, unless I've spelled something right in here, but pathfinding browser min, pathfinding.browser.js. Yeah, it's weird, it's done this before. Well, it doesn't like the library. It could possibly be because I've not put it in the right place, but should be the issue. 
But I've had this before, and it was all because I didn't have this pathfinding browser um, version in here, but I don't have this in my actual game, so I don't really know why it would give me that problem again. Not really sure that's in the that's probably why I've somehow managed to uh, upload an empty pathfinding. So let's just try that again, shall we? Always oh, helpful that you don't submit an empty file. I don't know how that happened. Might have possibly that by accident, but let's just check that's working. That one's empty as well, but let's see if it works without it. Now it's saying P is not defined. Hello, 104. So that what that means is that it's not actually um, finding something in my path. So, oh no, it's not. It's because I put a capital. So let's hopefully see that works. So nodes.sprites. No, it's node.sprite. Uh, new. Did I give it a capital N? It's a lowercase N, that's why. I'm making a lot of mistakes today. So let's try that. And that should hopefully work. Can't think of anything else that's going to break this down. There we go. So you see now these blocks here, that's like the optimal path it's picked. Obviously, if I wanted to change it now, what I theoretically can do is replace that there and have the F there, and it should. Fingers crossed. There you go. So you see that the path's now ending there. So I can, you know, if I wanted to have it so it's there instead. So it's a really short path for whatever reason. I can now just really easily just change where the path starts and ends, fingers crossed. There you go. Um, so that's a lot better. So you, the game's a little bit more dynamic when you're creating your new levels. You can just pass in. Obviously a new matrix as well. Um, but uh, you don't have to keep changing this every time. You can just... You don't have to calculate the, the X and Ys and things. You can just literally calculate from the end and, the end and start sprites. Which is good, so that's our path. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I've got quite, if I want to, I've got quite a lot of stuff in here. Um, because what I want to be able to do now is place some towers. I'm not going to worry about the AI just yet. I've got the path working. That's all nice. I can just do um, n dot visible equals false. I don't really need to put it there. I could put it somewhere else, but um, that's fine. So now we've just got our map. But we want to be able to click and draw some towers. So I'm going to make a function. I'm going to put it in here called place tower. So what we're going to do is we're going to say function place tower. And then all we're going to do is we're going to map. Um, the idea we're going to make a sprite called care set. We're going to make it invisible. Then what we're going to do is essentially um, that's just going to be like a really tiny sprite we're going to use. So I'm just going to do uh, care set equals new sprite um, just like that we're going to make it at 1-1 one, one. we're going to spell sprite correctly um, and then we're just going to literally just hide it we don't, we don't really care about it at the moment in time it's just purely there um, I mean you could if you really wanted to I guess so we can we can have it so you can see it um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have it so this um, care says constantly following our mouse. So what we'll do is we can say cursor dot x equals, and we're going to round it down. We can say floor, and I'm going to do mouse dot x divided by my tile size, but exactly the same for the y. And then that's going to then essentially lock it. So it's going to make it like a grid. So instead of you just be able to put your mouse anywhere and place towers anywhere, uh, like you could in my previous game. Now, provided everything works, we should, you see, I'm just being able to draw in there now. There's a few issues with it drawing, it's drawing behind the tile map, but you see it's almost, it's doing it perfectly in the grid, rather than being able to draw all over the shop. So that's good, that's working. Um, so then what we're gonna do is, we can fix the overlapping drawing thing really easily, but we're gonna have it, so we're gonna have um, a variable called gold, we're gonna set it to zero. 
uh, for now. I mean, maybe I can start on 50, just so I've got some starting gold. Um, but what I'm going to say is, if the cursor is overlapping, so dot overlapping, with a placeable, so it's a place the green, any of the green, um, and if I release the mouse, released, and I'm not a tower, because I don't want to overlap a tower, because I don't want to put two towers on once, and then my final and is going to be and I've got, obviously that might depend on what goal, what tower you've got selected, if you're going to have multiple towers, but for now I'm just having one tower, and it's fine, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new tower, dot sprite, which is going to get drawn at cursor.x and cursor.y. And then my gold, I'm going to lose 50 gold. So what should happen now is I can't draw it there, but I should. I'll just click the tower there. Obviously I've still got this all awkward thing of it colouring in, which is quite addictive actually. But it's drawn my tower there and I can't draw any more towers. So that's good, that's wet. Um, now I think what we want to do as well is say, um, else if my cursor is overlapping placeable, we want to change the colour, um, because really we want it to be so, um, um, in fact I think we don't need an else, I think we just need an if there. So if my cursor is overlapping to placeable, we can do cursor dot colour equals, I don't know, white, just so it's easy to see. Otherwise, um, cursor.color equals red, so we know that we can't place it there. So now, you see here, you can't see it because it's behind it. It's white, and then here it's red because I can't place that. Um, so yeah, so that's decent, I think. I'm trying to think if I should do it a different way. So like here I can't place it, but there I can, so it's white. but um, no, so it seems to be knocking it a little bit there, which is interesting. But um, hey ho, let's see how we get on. So now, if I then just put in a clear there, now you see I can't play, place the tower there, so it's red, and here it would be white, um, which works pretty well. So that's how our tower placement works, that's good. Um, I'm not going to worry about the thing is moving just yet. I think what we need to do is have it so we can actually uh, see things properly, I think. So I think we just need to do um, all sprites dot draw. And I think that should fix this. No, so we can do, what's a good way of doing it? Um, I think actually we can fix it really easily by just drawing the cursor afterwards. Let's see if that works for us. Okay, so I can draw, I can place tower there. Can't place it there if I click, it doesn't work. Go there, I can place tower. There we go. So just a little bit of a, a layering issue. I could have just changed the dot layer as well, but um, that seems a lot easier. So now we're now placing towers and we've got the path working and we've got it all drawing. So I think I'm going to leave it there because this video has been going on for a bit too long, 18 minutes, so I'm going to stop it there, and then please look into the next video if you want to see the enemies spawning and the tower shooting.